Praise the Lord to all the viewers in the name of the Lord and the Savior Jesus Christ. Today's topic, as part of this video, I have picked the end times, the end times about the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Though Jesus said he did not know the time and the hour of his coming, but he clearly gave a lot of hints, a lot of description, which we can easily read, understand from the scriptures so that we can be prepared for his second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the chapters, if at all you would like to understand, it is Matthew 24 and Luke 23 and Mark 13. These three chapters, if you can clearly understand, you would easily understand and get ready for his coming of Lord Jesus Christ. There are clearly a lot of symptoms which have been happening right now for the last couple of years which you can easily interpret that these are the end time events, the end time symptoms which you need to be diligent by being in prayerful, understand that these are the end times. So my video is an attempt to show at least few of them what's happening in the current world so that you can relate and let God convict you and encourage you as well, as well as part of this video. So let us look through first principle. So if you look at the temple which was built by Solomon's temple and in Matthew 24 first and second verse when Jesus along with the disciples came out of the temple the disciples were showing Jesus about the good buildings about the temple and they were saying the building is looking good with good stones then Jesus tend to tell that not even one stone of this temple of this building will be not unturned so today you see that we are in the similar situation after 70 AD when Titus the king of the Rome when he came and he spent a couple of months to destroy the entire Jerusalem and Israel, he even destroyed this temple. And you today, if you could look through the scripture, you see not even one stone is on upon the other. Did you see the prophecy which has been fulfilled? This prophecy was told by Jesus Christ in 32 AD as part of his 33 day, the, as part of his three and a half years of ministry while he was on this earth and that has been fulfilled in 70 AD after 35 years. So you could clearly see that one of the evidence, one of the symptom of the end times which Jesus spoke about that at the end time not even one stone will be upon the other which has been fulfilled. Now let us look into the second aspect of it you tend to see this is about the false preachers, false prophets coming and uh, preaching false doctrines, false traditions, false customs and then deceiving lot of people in this world. If you see in the current situation, 90% of the church is on the prosperity gospel. They speak about the health and wealth gospel. If you need to understand at a thematic level about this prosperity gospel, how it is unbiblical, you can watch in my channel itself. There are three videos at a thematic level I have clearly explained through the scriptures in totality from Old Testament and New Testament and I have proved that how prosperity gospel is unbiblical. And even you see in today, not only a lot of preachers, a lot of mega churches who are deceiving the people as I said as part of the prosperity gospel but even Pope Pope Francis on December 20, 2019 he said when he was part of one of the uh, invitation to the school at Vatican City one of the student asked how do you uh, tell gospel to a person who is of other faith and even to an atheist so he tend to make some uh, very contradictory comments which are totally contradictory to the obedience of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, we doesn't need to do evangelism, we doesn't need to spread the gospel, 
and he goes on to say that all the children are the children of God. There is no differentiation between people who know Jesus and who do not know Jesus. If you do good works, that is sufficient. Is this not deception? Is this not false preaching? Is the, are these not false doctrines? So this is clearly spoken in <coughs> Matthew 24 verse 5 which you can see as part of the screen. And the next one, the third one. In the current situation, you could clearly see everywhere surrounded in the world, you see the situation is very tense. The total peace is taken away from this world. Every nation is running towards the other nation. They want to have peace, but they are going to wage a war against one another. To name few, I can tell you, India and Pakistan, you know what happened few months back. You know the current situation, what is happening between Iran and US. You know what is happening uh, between Iran and Israel. The entire Middle East countries want to wipe out Israel from the world map. You also know between South Korea and US. You also know the trade war between US and China. You also know what is happening between Turkey and Syria. You also know what's happening between Iran and Iraq. You also know what is happening from Russia and the Gog Mega War where Gog represents the Russian leader. Probably it could be Putin or it could be from the Turkey uh, who is leading as a Prime Minister of Turkey. One of these two people will be the Gog of the Gog Mega War which is being spoken in Ezekiel 38 and 39. This video also I have uploaded as part of my channel. You can look through this. So don't you think the peace is taken away? And the lot of war situations are going. US Trump uh, putting Soleimani to death. The second most powerful person in the Iran regime. And also like Iran threatening to attack US, Iran threatening Israel and also Iran uh, putting down the Ukraine flight and U Iran also put the flag of red indicating that the situation has come that they need to fight a battle of war with their neighbors, Israel as well as US. Iran also bombed uh, in the place of Iraq where the US embassy was there all this, don't you think, are the symptoms? You see not only in Matthew 24, 6, but you also see this in Revelation 6 as well. The entire peace is taken away from the Lord. So, don't you think this is also one of the symptoms of the second coming of Lord Jesus Christ being pretty near? Just like the first symptom which I have spoken about, the false preaching, false prophets coming in, preaching all the false gospels. Third point, this is about famines. It is spoken in Matthew 24, 7, Luke 21, 11. Luke speaks about interesting things, great signs from the heaven. You know what has happened in Australia? Several months, the entire Australia was on fire more than two million animals died and the entire Australia was on burning. The entire Australians were praying for the rain to come which came very recently last a week or two so that some rain came and it really helped to some extent because of the prayers it could be that they have prayed. But can you imagine more than a couple of months the entire Australian greenery was under burnt, a lot of fire and a lot of efforts have been made to, to suppress the fire but it, it couldn't help. A lot of water was uh, put from the helicopters, from planes to suppress this water but it couldn't help. Did you not see the scripture is telling in Luke 21:11, where Luke is telling 
you would see the interesting things as signs from the heaven. So, don't you think so? And not only Australia, you see in several countries you have the problem of water scarcity as well. If you, if you see even in India, there are several states, take an example of Tamil Nadu, where in the last year water scarcity was there that the water was brought in trains to supply the water to the common man within Chennai. What is this? Don't you think all these belong to the famines which has caused as part of the scriptures? Our God already foretold all these symptoms. This is the third symptom which I want to, you to observe and keep a watch on what's happening in this world. And the next one, pestilence, Luke 21.11. <clears throat> you also see this again in Revelation 6 as well. Pestilence means some form of dangerous disease which comes and affect the entire global community. You see what's the situation of the coronavirus which has come from China. The entire China is locked down. All the airports, all the trains, buses, offices, everything has been closed. Not only China, it has been spread to 10 countries just within a span of a couple of weeks. And it is even felt that a lot of international airports are on guard right now because of this coronavirus. There is a lot of fear to a lot of people. Do you think the mankind is living in peace and uh, joy the way they used to live? Like how they used to live probably a few years back? All these transformations are happening in the last five years. If you speak about wars, these have been increased like anything. If you speak about the famines, these are the these days. If you speak about the pestilence, these days these, these have come. So you see what is the situation. Not only this, in the third uh, famine symptom as well, you speak about the earthquakes. If you remember 20-30 years back, you used to hear earthquake once in several years, maybe some part of the world, but now in weeks you will understand that the earthquakes have come in any part of the world. While I was observing this and I was trying to record this video and I was writing the literature for a couple of weeks, recently it has been observed, not recent but just yesterday, that there were earthquakes even in the Telugu states of India as well, Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. So you see how it is. And not only these, last year on 2019, December 24th and 25th, within a span of just 24 hours, you had nine earthquakes. So this is also one of the symptoms about the end times about the second coming of Lord Jesus Christ being coming near. Did you see this? Okay, now let me tell you the next symptom. So, it is spoken about in Luke 21, verse 12 to 19, about persecution. You know Israel is not persecuted today. If you see, all the Middle East countries want to wipe out Israel from the map. Is it not persecution? Do you not know ISIS, Islamic State of Iran and Syria, what were their main objective? It was to kill, behead all the Christians. Do you don't observe this? And a word of encouragement for you is when during the times of the independence for Iran, sometime in 1970s, there were only 500 families who were believers of Christ. But in spite of the strict government laws where they cannot accept any other religion, still 
you see millions of people have accepted Christ from Iran but the legal laws are very stringent very dangerous you will be put in jail or you will be put into the death so such is the situation which is coming near if you see not only in Iran even if you see in the situations in Pakistan Christians are persecuted to death similar situations are coming even in India after the recent government where the primary back end of this government is led by RSS where their agenda is to focus on Garvapusi which means to bring the people of Hindus who accepted Christ to bring them back forcefully not only that you see there is a lot of agitation going on because of the recent developments from the government where they want every member of India to prove their nationality certificate can you imagine no other card will help no passport will help no PAN card will help but you need to prove your identity by getting the date of birth from, you, from the place of birth where you have been born can you imagine how real it is? It is not realistic. But then the GEO has passed both in parliament as well as in Rajya Sabha as well. And it is asked to be enforced in all the states. But there is a lot of agitation going on. But then let me tell you, everything is happening as per God's sovereign will. When the end time is coming, you will be persecuted for my, for my name. Your own people will reject you. Even parents, your loved ones, for the sake of His name. This has been foretold by our Lord Jesus Christ when, when He was on this earth. That is going to happen. The times are very, very near. Very, very near. So, but then, whoever was whoever stands firm till the end facing all this persecution will have the fruit of life which is eternal life and the last point to understand the end times the exact last step of the Lord Jesus Christ coming is called as the abomination of desolation this is spoken about in Matthew 24 15 by the Lord Jesus Christ himself when the disciple asks him what are the symptoms of his second coming this is one of the key and the last symptom which you need to observe after which you would see the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ on the clouds of the heaven and uh, the abomination of desolation is nothing but a person or a statue taking the position of God means an image taking the glory and the honor of God that is called abomination of desolation what happens is the Antichrist who tend to come into this world in some time as part of the seven year rule at the midpoint after three and a half years he enters into the temple which he is going to construct in the first three and a half years probably in the first year itself and then the sacrificial system will start back again which was stopped because of the Lord Jesus Christ because he himself became the sacrifice he himself became the lamb who was put on to death on the cross for the forgiveness of for the forgiveness of the sin for the remission of our sins and then this animal sacrifice was stopped but then this guy antichrist after coming onto this world arena the animal sacrifice is going to start again in the first three and a half years after the temple construction is being completed so after three and a half years <coughs> he himself enters into the temple into the most holy of holy place and then he creates an image and he gives the spirit and this image talks and this image takes the position of our holy God 
who resided in the most holy place, holy of holy place, as part of the Old Testament. <coughs> so the abomination of desolation means this image of the Antichrist taking the place of God in the temple where the most holy of holy place is resided is called as the abomination of desolation which means God hates this like anything. So this is spoken in the scriptures of 1 Thessalonica 2nd verse 3 and 4 and even in Revelations 13, 14, 15 and Daniel 12 as well. So I am encouraging you as part of this video that you please introspect. Don't believe just because I am telling. Read. Ask God to give you wisdom that you may understand the end times. Because the scripture says, let the wise man understand the prophecies. It is told in the Revelations first chapter. So you need to understand the end times. And there are another few symptoms which are coming, which are called as one world religion. And Pope John Francis is behind this one world religion. He is going on and preaching and meeting a lot of big leaders of different countries and he is promoting the one world religion. He says there will, no, there, will no, there will not be any world if we believe in different faiths. So he, his form of one world religion is nothing but do good, be good, no faith, no God. You just need to be good to one another, that's it. And uh, he has already started his agenda and he has already had a sign up with one of the Sunni top leader of this world sometime in uh, September 2019 and he also met Buddhist leaders and he's promoting this one world religion. Don't you think all these are the symptoms? Not only this, I forgot to mention one more thing. As part of <coughs> these famines and pestilences, in Philippians, sometime in January, you know the volcanoes have come out. So this is also one of the dangerous symptoms which you need to be observing. So I hope this video was an encouragement for you and that I was able to help you with some insights about the some events which are happening in and around this world in the present situation, in the current context. So I want you to be diligent, prayerful, repent of your sin daily and depend upon the God and the Gospel of Christ. And if any of you who is watching this video do not understand what the gospel is. The gospel is all about the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to understand that you are a sinner. You are a born sin because of the Adam's descendant. You became sinful. And you are destined for hell and condemnation. And you need a savior so that you are not condemned to hell. And there is only one savior who has promised to redeem you from your sinful nature. Who is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ who came, who died on the cross, who paid the price for your sin and he has given you the gift of salvation which is free for you. What you are supposed to only do is repent of your sinful nature and ask forgiveness to the Lord Jesus Christ and he will forgive you. And then you need to submit your rest of the life to Lord Jesus Christ by being obedient to him to obey his commandments what he has taught you as part of this three and of ministry while he was on this earth and uh, i want to thank you and if you like this video then please subscribe like and share to your friends so that it is glory to god and an encouragement for many other people thank you so much